Life Holidays, I'm back. This is section two, the customer journey, customer first journey, the one that we're all excited about. Last time we spoke about the customer experience and the second part of our journey looks at customer communication. Now, when it comes to customer communication, what we're saying there is that we want to engage with our customers in the way that they want to be engaged. If the customer is core to everything that we do, what are we saying to them? How are we saying it to them? Is it what they want to hear? We want to truly understand our customer and understand how do they want to be spoken to? What do they want to be spoken to about? And are we delivering that? What mediums are we using to communicate with them? What language are we using? Is it understandable? Are we clear? You know, and so this is a big part of the communication piece. We want to communicate with our customer. We want to be one with them. We want them to feel our purple blood in their purple blood. Hope that makes sense. So that is the communication piece of the, the second part of our journey, which is a big part. And I think we only have one left. So just stay along on the ride with me. We have one more piece of the, of the customer first journey to get to. to have you sitting here with us today, Tembega. Tell us about where you, you know, where you sit within Holland Life. I have been with Holland for 10 years this year. I started as a data capturer and I moved up to the amendments area. And then I started with the complaints department. I did a bit of um, short term and um, credit life, so now I'm only um, concentrating on life. The reason why we're speaking to you, I mean, we've got a, a number of people that deal with, with complaints in the area, um, but we received two quite special compliments um, on your behalf. You say it's an honor sitting here for me, it's an honor sitting with you because you are one of the people that's helping to bring to life what we say. And, and you can tell that from the compliments. So here you have a compliment from Leandra Andrews and it reads like this. Thank you for your prompt response. I want to compliment the way you handled the dispute and I'm really happy with the outcome of my complaint. I will continue doing business with you. We have another one from Tetleho Marugana and she says, I would like to thank Tembeka Mavuso, customer relations consultant. She has handled both my case and my mother's case very diligently and with utmost professionalism. She has really gone out of her way to keep clients happy and for that I thank her. What do you think that you that you did that made you know that made this interaction so special for these customers? I believe um, giving our clients attention and um, responding promptly and then again I would say um, keeping the client in the loop. Should the complaint be complex, we have to communicate to the client in terms of how the investigations are going. And when the client would say, please give me a call, I would do that. So in that I'm hearing one, a real sort of commitment to the case, you know, and taking ownership for the case and taking accountability, which are also things that as Holland Life has come up quite a lot to say, we want to see more accountability in the business. If you had to um, maybe share with the rest of, the, of your complaints team or even just across Holland that we need to be thinking of when we're looking at our customers and encouraging them to be able to actually compliment us in this way. I normally ask myself this question that um, if I were that client, what would I expect? I believe that it is only when we put ourselves in the client's shoes we would also want to get a proper customer service. So I'm hearing their empathy is a big thing. Put yourself in the customer's shoe and say, is this the service that I would be wanting to receive? Okay, well, thank you so much, Tembeka. We are honored and pleased to have you on the team. You're making a real difference into our, in our customers' lives and you're allowing us to live what we say. Hi. The last time we talked about brand as one of the components in the formula to help us keep customers first. Today we're going to talk about customer experience, which sounds like an easy thing. But if you put your shoes on as a consumer and you think about where things happen that are really great, if you're eating out or going shopping, I promise those things don't happen by accident. They are deliberately designed and executed. And we've done the same thing here at Hollard. We've created a Hollard customer experience formula so that we can create those customer experiences deliberately. And it really is comprised of three things. One is to be human, is to remember what it feels like when people interact with us. 
the second is to actually get things done, is to do what we say we're going to do and to own it personally as the person that's dealing with that. And the third thing sounds like such a simple thing, but it's something that consumers typically complain quite a lot about, and that is proactively communicating with them to let them know where we are. So three things, being human, getting stuff done, and communicating. Simple ingredients for creating great customer experiences. Next time, we'll talk about what happens when things go wrong. Cheers. So I had an amazing experience with the lady that I buy a lot of my clothing from. I saw a top of hers that was online and I needed it for a function at the end of the month. Um, she searched all her stores looking for the top for me. She couldn't find it anywhere and phoned and apologised profusely that she couldn't find the top for me. Then on the Tuesday the following week she phoned me at about 9 o'clock at night to say that she had finally found the top. And she was very cross with her staff because they didn't, have, they didn't look properly for the top. Um, and then she asked me if I still wanted it, and I said definitely. And on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock, she arrived at the office with the top all wrapped up in a beautiful bag with her speed point machine, put it through, gave me a free beautiful necklace with it, and yeah, I'm now the proud owner of a gorgeous top. <laughs> oh, it made me feel um, very valued, um, that she actually wanted my business, that she went out of her way to go and find the stuff for me and make me feel good on the day that I was having a function. So I think Holo can learn from the experience just by making sure that every customer is valued, that every time somebody comes into Hollard, that when they leave, they feel better for coming into Hollard um, and not getting very upset or walking away with a bad experience because always your last experience is the experience that you tell the world. Um, so if you've, had a bad, if you've had 50 good experiences and one bad one, you're going to tell everyone about the bad one. Hi, I'm Sidiso. I just recently had a claim from Pollard. I've had my policy for two, two and a half years. So. The initial stages of the claim, uh, communication was very poor. Um, I wasn't in constant uh, communication with the consultant that was initially handling the claim. And then uh, Robert, I think, who's a senior claims advisor or something like that, came in, he took over the process, it was very efficient, it was very professional, communication was upfront, communication was very important with me. Because can you imagine having a claim and, and you're not talking to anybody and you don't know what, what's happening. But with Holland, I mean, I had him on WhatsApp, I had him on email. He was calling me constantly looking for such documentation. And I mean, I, I felt I could speak to him on a personal level as well about how I felt about everything. I got the message that the claim was approved. So you can imagine that the excitement that I had and the joy and the relief rather. And then after that, to go back to that same town where I'm not talking to anybody, no one's calling me, no one's saying anything for a good three weeks, eh? And 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 as you might as you as you're aware, I had to lodge a complaint. And and again, uh, when you lodge a complaint, you get an automated response, no feedback, nothing. All I have is a reference number. And fortunately, Taryn, you came through as the, as the customer experience manager. You escalated the process, escalated my complaint, and within a day, I was I was, I was shocked to see that everything was approved. Payment was made and yeah, I was a happy client again. So communication is something that Holla can definitely do better. Either, either through automated response where you submit a form or whatever, then you get an automated response to let you know which stages you are at when it comes to the claim itself. It wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant experience, although I must emphasize that I am a happy client at the end. However, initially it, it, it wasn't a happy experience at all. But out of 10, I'd, I'd give them a shocking three. Eh? Look, as much as the experience wasn't pleasant, however, they, they, it is a reputable company. They, they do process the claim. They do pay out eventually. As, as, as bumpy as the road may be towards you getting your claim approved, they do eventually pay out. And I would recommend them to, to friends and family, I won't lie.